What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome to another live stream from Bourbon Bites. I am Clifton. Um, I think we're going good here today. Um, give me a thumbs up if we're good to go. I'm using my Streamlabs software this time. Um, I, I used to use this um, a couple weeks ago, and I stopped for a while, and now it's like, oh, we can't broadcast your signal. <laughs> so I think we're being broadcast now, but I just want to make sure. Um, but yeah, welcome to the live stream. I know uh, it's a little different this week because Perry um, didn't go live before me. Usually you guys pop in right after his chat, so... Um, excited for tonight though we got some really good um, new whiskeys that I actually have never tried before so I'm really excited to try them and of course they are brought to you by the one and only Patrick Starkey who is in the chat um, Patrick thank you so much I want to say you know right off the bat thank you so much for these samples I'm so excited to try them um, and I'm excited to review them so if you saw the thumbnail and the title below you know, of course, I'm reviewing Woodenville Whiskey, and I have five different expressions from Woodenville tonight. Um, like I said, I, I, I probably have tried the regular bourbon and rye, but it's been a while. Um, so I'm really excited to try the new ones and revisit the ones that I may or may not have had. I don't know, it's been a while. <laughs> um, but good to see you all. First of all, shout outs to everyone. Um, Steve A., Joseph Brazo, Brandon, Steven, uh, I think, oh, Trev Wilson, of course. Uh, and, uh, Buds, what's up? What's up, guys? Thank you guys for stopping in. Um, welcome to the chat. Um, if you saw my message earlier, um, I just want to let you know that I just launched my Patreon. And it was something that a couple people had asked about, and I kind of wavered on, you know, if I wanted to actually do one. Um, but I decided to go forward with it. And, um, yeah, so if you look in the description down below this video, um, and click see more, you can see, like, all the different tiers and stuff. But I did want to celebrate the launch of it by doing an, my first official after party. So it's going to be something that's normally reserved to the $10 tiers of patrons. Um, I think that I, it was hard to kind of pick up like what tier, you know, goes with what. But I, I'm just basing it off of other YouTubers that I've seen. But normally it would be a $10 tier item to do the after party. And that what that is, is every time we do a live stream, I'm going to have a little after show on a hangout, like a Google hangout. So you guys can join, chat with me be on camera, just be on mic or whatever, and just chat. I'm um, super excited for that. But for this first one that we're doing tonight after this stream, um, it's open to all patrons. So even if you're not ready to, you know, fully hop in at that $10 level, which, you know, I don't blame you. It's, it's like new. Um, anyone that signs up for Patreon at all, even if you're at the $2 level, $5 level, $10 level, whatever, y'all are all invited tonight. So just want to get that out of the way. Um, so just make sure sometime tonight um, during the stream, just check out that Patreon. Like I said, the link is down in the description below. And if you're watching the replay, um, feel free to sign up. Um, it's just in the future, it'll be the $10 level that gets the after show. So just so you guys know, um, I'm really excited about that, though. Um, like I said, I thought a lot about like what I want to offer with the Patreon, but um, I think I kind of figured it out. And of course, I'm going to add more perks as it goes on. I'm going to add some actual merch, like some shirts, um, some glasses I'm in the works on. So keep an eye on that. I'm still drinking coffee because I, like, I was like so sleepy earlier tonight. Um, so yeah, so I guess I'll open it up with what are you guys drinking or two questions. One, what are you drinking right now? And second question is, have you ever had anything from Woodenville? We all know, pa uh, Joseph, of course, has had things from Woodenville. <laughs> he's like the Woodenville guy. Um, but these samples, like I said, are from Patrick earlier. Um, just want to make sure he's here. Yeah, there he is. Okay, cool. I was like, want to make sure he's here. He was here earlier. So I did want to actually start with the, yeah, unfortunately I don't have the cast strength, Joseph, but, um, I haven't seen that here in California. And I know Patrick, um, I don't, I think he actually just got a bottle of it, but he didn't have when he sent it. Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm really excited for this lineup because there are some ones that I've been really, really wanting to try. Um, so let me put the coffee away because I'm going to keep drinking that. <laughs> um, oh, Perry stopping in. Perry, good to see you. Ha enjoy your early anniversary dinner. Um, we miss you tonight, but we'll see you um, next time you're live. <laughs> and you guys go check out Perry's stream or his podcast, of course. Um, this is my bourbon podcast. From what I hear, he has a very interesting ISO sessions coming up. Um, so no, no spoilers, but I heard it sounds very interesting. So you guys make sure to check that out. <laughs> um, what's up, Nick? Thanks for stopping in. Um, so Stephen has only had the the standard and the port because those are the two show up in his area so far. Um, Donnie asks, "Who is first patron?" Actually, 
the man of the night, um, Patrick Sarkey, was the very first patron of my Patreon. So thank you, Patrick, for that. Of course, I've had a few others joined since then. Um, so thank you to everyone that has joined, you know, even before they knew about the whole, like, after party thing. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I can, like, grow with you guys. You guys can let me know, you know, what you want to see there, um, what's working, what's not working. But, yeah, so... Yeah, Patrick was number one, but y'all are all welcome. Y'all still, there's, there's still less than 10, so if y'all want to be in the top first 10, let me know. So I'm going to start with the rye, and the only reason I'm doing that is because everything else is the bourbon, and I do want to make sure that we are consistent with, like, comparing to the bourbon. So this is the rye. This is just their standard um, Woodenville rye. Um... So Steve A. is sipping on some um, single malt whiskey society, I believe. Um, Craigalat, Craigalat, Craigalachi. <laughs> so bad my Scotch names, dude. I'm sorry. Um, I, but I've heard everything from the um, Scotch malt whiskey society is actually good. I don't know if I said single malt or Scotch malt. Whatever. I, I know what it is. I just don't know the particulars. <laughs> no Woodenville yet. Have a sample waiting, though. Um, Steve is drinking a Warehouse K. Russell's pick. Always good. Um, and of course, Joseph's drinking the Woodenville caster at the end. One day, Joseph. Hey, if you if you want to send some samples, I'll do I'll do another Woodenville episode. <laughs> um, um, so, Donnie, I do not have any integrations with Streamlabs. I, I literally looked it up. I don't think it integrates with Patreon. The only thing it does is if you send me a super chat, um, I have my little animation, and I fixed it. It's not going to block my face again. <laughs> so it, it does that, and it does subscribers, but it does not currently do Patreon. So I will give shout-outs to all my patrons um, before the end of this. Um, so yeah, Donnie, look for that. Cause like, I, I do want to give a shout out to everyone that's joined so far. So, um, yeah, so still have that coffee in my mouth. I'm trying to clear, <laughs> clear my palate a bit. So Brandon has seen a couple of Woodenville barrel proof picks around us. They're usually about 80. Yeah. I, I really don't have too much experience with the brand other than just their standard stuff. Um, but hoping tonight that I can learn a bit more about it and be like, ooh, this is more interesting. I need to look more into this. So that's, that's my goal here. Um, Kragalechi. Kragalechi or Lechi? Kragalechi. I'm going to say it wrong. I'm never going to remember that. But <laughs> So this is the ride. This is um, one of their two original releases. It did win double gold as the best ride in the American Distilling Institute Craft Spirits Awards. That is a mouthful. In 2017. <laughs> But this is 90 proof. Um, it's 100% rye whiskey. So, oh yeah. On the nose, definitely 100% rye whiskey. I don't know the age on this. I know most of their stuff is like five plus years old, but I think this might be a bit younger. It smells, there's way more oak influence than I would expect from a rye. Usually I get that more on like a bourbon. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it. you can tell it's a rye. <laughs> it, it definitely, it doesn't smell like a, you know, like a low rye rye. It smells like, you know, 100%, 95% rye. What, what I'm used to, I, I'm very familiar with that kind of rye, and I get very similar notes on that. But there's a lot more barrel influence than I thought would be on there. Um, <laughs> Steve A says he'll tell me on the after party. Yes, Steve A is one of my patrons. He will be there tonight. Um, we'll, we'll see Donnie. We'll see if we get a barrel roll. If we don't, I'll manually trigger one for you. <laughs> I did turn off my audio, so let me, I think I might've muted my audio. Hold on. Hold on. Man, there's no audio. Hold on. Let me see if I can, I saw, I saw it pop up. Let me see if I can get Do a barrel roll. All right. I feared that that was your makeup audio. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie, for the super chat. Um, face is visible. <laughs> I just had my audio for a second, so. Um, it seemed a lot faster that time than last time. We'll see. So, yeah, I, I really do like the, the barrel influence on this. So let's go ahead and see how it tastes. Cheers. Interesting. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, a toasted barrel Michter's. Um, Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye is... As you guys know, <laughs> one of my favorite whiskeys ever. Michter's Barrel Strength Rye is my like favorite standard release rye, even though it's limited release. But this is giving me some really similar Michter's vibes, and I'm curious. I'm reading the info about it. Um, it says, prior to being coopered, uh, the barrel wood is seasoned in open air, rain, wind, sun, and snow for 18 months 
softening the wood's harsh tannins. So I don't know if they do a toast. Oh, wait, no. They are slowly toasted and heavily charred to further enrich the wood's desirable flavors. I told you guys I was getting some kind of toasted barrel on that. And that's a note that I really, really do enjoy, especially with rye. Man, toasted barrel and rye are just like the perfect pairing for me. And this is, remi I mean, that's a good sign. That By me saying it reminds me of Michter's is a very, very good sign. Michter's is my favorite. Michter's rye is my favorite rye. So, may have a new competitor here. <sighs> it's, it's, it's delicious on the nose. Um, just catching up in the chat real quick. Um, dill or spearmint on the nose, Brandon? Um, I, I would normally say yes on like 100% rye. The only reason I don't say it this time is I think that oak kind of covers it up in a good way. Um, so it's not, it's, uh, Brandon, I think knowing what ryes you like, I think you may like this one. Because um, I've tried to, I've given you a couple that you, that you liked. And I think this is very similar to the ones that you've had. Um, Nick Foles says he watched the Woodenville Bourbon Pursuit episode. Seems like some cool people running it. Oh, I missed that. I need, I need to, I, I've seen Woodenville all around, but I've never had the chance to really try it. So I'm really excited to finally get into it tonight. Um, Bud's popped his double oak, um, castor single barrel store pick, Balcones rye, and it was mint chip ice cream. Oh, I know you're, you're a sucker for the Balcones. Yeah. They're doing some really, really awesome stuff. I have not had their, um, rye yet. I, I, I think someone actually picked up a bottle for me. Um, the new store pick of the rye. I'm about to follow up on that. Cause I do not know. <laughs> Richie Z. What's up? Good to see you. Um, yeah. High times at Costa Mesa. That's actually where, um, my friend that picked up a bottle of that um, supposedly picked me up one from that store. I'm going to check on that. Yeah, Brandon's working his way into Rise. He's still not the biggest fan, but I think I'm slowly turning him. <laughs> yeah, so on the nose, let me go back to for a second taste, though. It almost hinges on being like a Texas whiskey. And I wonder if that's something to do with the, the weather in Washington. Because you guys know that weather affects whiskey so much. You know, how quickly it goes in and out of the barrel with the drastic cold and warm um, temperatures. There's a hinge or a tinge of Texas whiskey on that. But it's not nearly as, like, strong as Texas whiskey. So, um, Buds, you're saying about Balcones rye. This is similar. I, I think you may enjoy this. Um, probably at cast strength, I would say, because you, you like the Balcones cast strength. I would love to try this at cast strength. And I know Joseph said they have a cast strength release, but it's distillery only, which makes sense. It's hard to get. So I, I dig this a lot and I'm going to seek this out now. I actually, I dismissed this. I was like, uh, what, what Washington rye is it going to be that good? But man, this is good. Oh, Jason from the master drums here. Thank you. We're stopping in, Jason. Good to see you. And, of course, thank you for being on my stream last week. We had a ton of fun. If you guys missed that, um, I had Jason, Bill, uh, Matt, and Perry. We all played some video games and had a really good fun stream. So if you missed that, go check it out on my channel. Um, tons of fun. So And also check out his channel because he's awesome. <laughs> I have not gotten to the Deanston 18 yet, Stephen. I, I'm holding off on opening that. Oh, so Patrick says that they age it on the desert side of the state. Interesting. Because I was going to say, it, it's very reminiscent of a Texas whiskey, but not nearly as, like, bold and powerful. The oak's still there more than a normal rye, but it's not nearly as, you know, grab you by the, like, <laughs> grab you by the tannins. Is that a thing? I don't know. Don, what is up? Welcome to my first... Bourbon Megabyte, which is my name for my $10 tier on Patreon. Um, Don was the first $10 patron, which, like I said earlier, that's the normal tier to get these after parties that are going on after this stream. Um, so if you're interested in that, this week, any tier on Patreon gets into the after party. But moving forward, um, it'll be the $10 and up. So, um, yeah, thank you, Don. And thank you, everyone that's become a patron so far. Like I said, I'm going to give a shout out to everyone at the very end. So if you guys want a shout out, um, let, make sure to sign up. The link is in the description below. Um, just click show more and it'll pop down. So y'all are all invited to the hangout if you become a Patreon. So patron, I guess become a Patreon. That sounds wrong. <laughs> all right. So time to move into the bourbon. Um, because the bourbon is going to lead us into all these other expressions tonight. I did want to try the rye first because it was different than all the others. But that rye, man, I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to have to pick up a bottle, especially these like Castron store picks. Um, because if it's as good as that at Castron, 
Oh, that's going to be amazing. Um, do I have the K&L Woodenville cast rent pick? I do not. I actually, I'm really bad. I, I've i heard of Woodenville for so long, but I have not had a chance to try it. I, I'm pretty sure I went to a tasting where they had their, like, their standard releases, and it was good. Um, but that was several, several months ago. Um, and it wasn't any of their, like, rarer releases. So I'm excited to get more into it. Thank you, Donnie. I forgot you guys can send links. Um, yes, Donnie just posted a link to the Patreon. Um, patrons of the people of Patreon. Yes, yeah, so... Like I said, if y'all went into the after show, let me know, um, or don't let me know, <laughs> let me know on Patreon and I'll send y'all a link right after we end the stream. Um, give me like a couple minutes to get like everything organized and set up and um, you'll get a little notification on Patreon. I'm like, clipped and posted a link to the um, hangout. So looking forward to that a lot. And of course, totally optional. I, I, I really do appreciate all the support, whether it's a super chat or, a, you know, becoming a patron. Y'all don't have to do that. It's... It, I've been putting a lot more money into the channel lately, um, mainly because I feel like we've been growing a bit, and it's all thanks to you guys. I mean, I've been having some amazing guests on, like I said earlier, uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum, um, It's a Bourbon Night. Like, I've had so many awesome guests on, and I feel like, it just like, if you asked me like, a couple months ago, like, like oh, you're going to have It's a Bourbon Night on your stream, I'm like, yeah, no way. So that's kind of why I decided to launch it now. I've been putting a lot more money into it, um, going out and buying bottles specifically to review, and of course... StreamYard and things like that cost a lot of money, so that's why I decided to launch it now. But again, no obligation. I just thought it'd be fun to have a way for you guys to hang out with me more often. So, and more merch coming soon. So stay tuned for that. So the bourbon is a lot more, I would say, not not muted, but it's very mellow. I would say the rye just jumped out of the glass, like that oak. And that spice was hopping right out of the glass. Now, I, I know that the bourbon is the same proof. Um, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. I'm working on making them a little bit better, so <laughs> that does mean a lot. Um, so this was considered 2016's Craft Whiskey of the Year, according to the American Distilling Institute Craft Spirits Awards. <laughs> also 90 proof. Um, no age statement on the website, but I think most of their stuff is around five years old. Oh, okay, now that I revisit it, I'm getting a lot of, like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, a, like, a, a, a don't take this offensively, it reminds me of screwball peanut butter whiskey. There's a lot of peanut butter on this, and it's almost in, like, a really sweet liqueur kind of way. Man, that's like a, it's like a peanut butter ball, like a dessert. Um, I'm just going to see what they're saying on the website. They're, they're talking about a lot about the oak and the creme brulee notes. But for me, it's almost more of like a chocolate peanut butter ball. Um, the, oh, yeah. The proof on the bourbon is 90 proof. No problem, Brandon. Um, really peanut butter forward. Yeah, that's mainly what I'm getting. I'm getting a little... I see what they're going with the creme brulee a bit. But it's almost like if you had a peanut butter flavored creme brulee. So let's go ahead and see if it tastes, tastes similar. again on the palate very very reminiscent of texas whiskey there's like a certain note and if you guys have had texas whiskey you kind of know what i'm talking about there's a certain note that sets all texas whiskey apart from kentucky bourbon it's i don't know how to describe it it's almost like a chocolatey wood forward note this has it at first but it, again it's just like the ride it's a lot simpler than a texas whiskey it's not just like punching you in the face with that oak it's like oh there's oak but then it's like it mellows out into a lot more flavors and i think the peanut butter does come back on the palate like a reese's peanut butter cup i would say so on the nose brandon on the palate it's more it's more of just like peanut butter and then like at the end there's might be like a hint of chocolate whereas like a peanut butter cup is like pretty chocolate forward and then you get the peanut butter but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's really, really delicious. Very, very different from most other whiskeys I've had. Um, and, you know, for a craft distillery, Woodenville is knocking it out of the park. I mean, they you guys know, y'all have watched other YouTubers rave about this brand. This is my first time really trying it and trying it for you guys. Um, I really cannot complain about that. Now, I will say that I prefer the rye a bit more than the standard bourbon, but that's because I'm a big fan of rye whiskey in general. Um Especially those like deep, rich, toasted notes on a rye whiskey. So, yeah, but the bourbon's good. I mean, it's 
I don't know the price point on the bourbon. I think the bourbon's around it's like 40, 40 to 45 dollars. I don't know exactly the price point on that. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's really solid. I mean it it the only thing it leaves to be desired is maybe a bit more, I guess, proof. It's 90 proof. I tend to go to higher proof bourbons, but I did hear from Joseph that there's a cast strength one, but um Joseph says any root beer. That was a note that I heard of people a lot of people say. Maybe slightly, but I'm just I'm just kind of overwhelmed with the peanut butter. The root beer may be a way to describe that Texas whiskey kind of note I was getting. Oh, I now that you say root beer, I, I do get a little bit of it. But um, to me, it's more, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's power of suggestion. But man, hearing that root beer, I'm like, you know what? I get the root beer a lot. Um, I don't think I would have said that without knowing, hearing that, though. That's really good, though. So I'm going to save this glass. I do want to do a comparison between the different bourbons. Because next, we're moving into limited release um limited releases from woodenville so the next few that are coming up you probably cannot get unless you're in washington correct me if i'm wrong um joseph and patrick but um i'm pretty sure that the next few that i'm going to review are either distillery exclusive or washington exclusive so you guys are the experts um so please feel free to correct me if i'm ever wrong about anything <laughs> um wesley so oh, what's up wesley uh, he says, Woodenville Rye is legit. I have the port finish on hold at a local shop. Need to pick it up tomorrow. Uh, somehow got it for $49.99. Wow, for the port finish. Man, I think that's one of the limited release ones, if I'm not wrong. Um, so Joseph said, compared to other 90-proof bourbons, it um, stands up for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm just not super familiar with a lot of lower-proof bourbons. That sounds so, like, s snooty of me. I just mean I've been drinking a lot of high-proof stuff lately, so... <laughs> Um, but I do want to try it with the bottled and bond bourbon. Now, I do, do have some info on this one. Um, and I do want to do a little side-by-side. -side, so I'm going to pour a little bit more of the regular bourbon. So this is a bottled and bond. Um, it's, of course, being bottled and bond, it's at least four years old. I think this one's five years old, actually. Um, it is very, very regulated by the government. But in... I mean, y'all know I love bottled and bond products. I think it really does that... Not stringent, but that strict regulation really does, I think, say something. I mean, they're they're willing to they're a new craft distillery. They're willing to you know adhere to certain guidelines and make an incredible product. So, um, Mash and Drum says, thankfully the bourbon is here in Ohio now. Yeah, it's it's been here in California for a while, I, I, and like I said, I, I've kind of slept on it, um, but I'm really really excited to try more. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Joseph says distillery only. Patrick says there are about eight triple barrel left at the distillery. Bottle and bond is gone, and I found a shelf of the Applewood Stave at the local store. Oh, that's man, y'all are so lucky to find that stuff. Um, by the way, I do want to say thank you to the 19 viewers watching right now. Um, always appreciate you guys coming in. I feel like we get more viewers every day. You know, on these like solo streams, I really do appreciate it. And if you're new here, man, I man, I don't know how to say man. <laughs> uh, I love if you can subscribe and um check out more because i mean there's so many new faces i'm so glad to see all the regulars and some new faces here tonight so i just, just want to let y'all know i appreciate you you know <laughs> so this is the um hunter proof bottled and bond um i had some info on that let me pull it up real quick yeah so it's 60 dollars msrp distillery only grain to glass bourbon aged five years in heavily charred new oak barrels and bottled at 100 proof um that's their description of it so we'll get into that in a bit um Battle of the 90 Proof Bourbons. Maybe it's a good idea, Brandon. All the Woodenville stuff is five years old. Oh, okay. Thank you, Joseph. I wasn't sure. Um, I, like I said, I saw five years, five years, five years, five years, but that's, that's really good to know. Um, what's up, Juan? Good to see you. Taxes in Washington is no joke. Oh man, I know. I, it's, it's a, yeah, $60 MSRP, but Washington, what are they paying? Like 80 out the door. <laughs> I swear, man, I went to, a, I told this story to a couple people, but I went to a liquor store when I was in Seattle, um, just on vacation. And I was like, yo, I'll pick up something cheap just to drink for the trip. Boy, was that a mistake. I saw, like, the price on the shelf. I was like, oh, okay, it's, like, $25. Get to the register, it's, like, 40 Because, like, all the taxes. It's ridiculous. So just be aware if you're going to Washington. <laughs> um, Yeah, we're getting to the triple barrel in a bit. I want to work my way up to that, though. I, I feel like that's a good one to end on. This is the bottle and bond bourbon. On the nose, it's very, very similar to the regular bourbon. I would say the regular one is a little sweeter, I would say. Ball and Bond comes across a little more dense and um, maybe more wood characteristic. 
I don't know. They're the same age, but this one's just higher proof, really. So let's go ahead and taste it. Cheers. Again, punch of that Texas whiskey kind of note. Ooh. Ah, I like it. This is up my alley in every, every way. This is, okay. I don't have any other way to describe the bottle and bond other than it's the regular bourbon turned up to 100 proof. It's that proof kick really, really does help it. And I feel like I really wish they would release this more in more places other than just the distillery only because this is like a bomb bourbon. This is like legit Probably one of one of the best bottle and bond bourbons that I've had. I mean, I, I've had a, quite a few actually. Man, that's good. Yeah, it's. I mean, flavor wise, it's right there with the regular bourbon. It's just all the things that I like about it are amped up. The proof that there's a little bit more of that like that kick you get at the beginning that like what I call Texas kick. I keep calling it Texas. I need to stop doing that because it's obviously not just Texas. It's Washington too. We'll call it the desert, the, the heat kick. I don't know. <laughs> um, there's a little bit more of that, but behind that is all the peanut butter, chocolate. There's way more chocolate on this one, I will say. It's more of like a Reese cup, like Brandon said earlier. I get like more of those Reese cup notes on this one. Man, that's good. Robot Scott, what's up? Welcome. Patrick says he likes the bottle and bond way better than the 90 proof. I have to agree with you there, man. This bottle and bond is exceptional. I like emptied the glass so quickly on that. Man, that is good. That's my favorite so far. I love the rye, but that bottle and bond bourbon is legit. If you ever see that, like you said, it's distillery only. It was limited release. If you happen to see it, maybe not on secondary, but if you happen to see it, <laughs> man, you're going to like that. Uh, hope that it was a 10 year anniversary release. Gotcha, Patrick. Um, oh yeah, Jason, I need to watch your replay. Um, I, I do have it on my like watch list. I missed your live stream of, um, with old Forrester, but I, I do need to watch that. Cause I, I, I followed her for a long time on social media. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen that, check out, um, mash and drums channel. Um, he's here in the chat. Um, he did an interview with, um, Jackie Zykin from old Forrester and promise I will watch that soon. <laughs> Really, it's, uh, she's an awesome woman, and she's doing great things for the brand. So what do we move to next? We have two more. We have the... I feel like we'll save the Ardbeg for last. So we got to save this, the peated one for last. So we'll move on to the Applewood Stave. This is an Applewood finish one. This one I hear a lot about. Oof. Bob and Bond's hitting me. <laughs> so let me empty out a glass and move on to the apple wood um so as you guys can tell i'm liking this a lot <laughs> so yeah so woodenville i don't know too much about the history of them i do know that they are probably one of the most highly revered craft distilleries out there at least in like the bourbon online community um i hear about them just as much as i hear about texas whiskey like that's how like prominent they are in like American whiskey not I mean of course you know Kentucky whiskey brands are way more prominent but for the craft distillers I feel like I hear about Woodenville just as much as I hear about the ones in Texas do you guys hear about Woodenville very often I mean I know I'm kind of biased because I'm in California and of course Seattle or Washington's right up there but um I think it's pretty well known I mean let me know those of you that don't live near Washington or California do you hear about Woodenville? Can you get it? I know Jason said earlier that he could get, um, he just now can get it in Ohio. Um, but I'm curious about those of you that are in Kentucky or in New York. Um, can you guys get it? Uh, Steven asks, has anyone tried the clover bourbon or rye? Popped up at a store by me and know nothing about it. I have not. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, is it, what's the distillery or do you know where it's from? Oh, that's interesting to know, Patrick. Applewood said, <laughs> that's interesting to know. Patrick says, <laughs> Applewood is 100 proof too. Oh, that makes me even more excited about it. So let me read what they have to say about it. Um, so they say, the Applewood is a 2017 harvest released, toasted Applewood finished bourbon. Um, fully matured five-year-old straight bourbon whiskey added to toasted Applewood staves. 
The applewood finishing process adds depth and richness with aromas of apple and berry on the nose. And palate of a traditional bourbon note. Yeah, yeah. I don't like reading notes before I taste something, so I don't want to get into that. But um, Joseph says he picked a Castron Apple Stave bourbon. That's one of my all-time favorite bourbons. Oh, that sounds good. I mean, I, I, I did cheat and nose this a little bit. It smells really good. Um, Robot Scott says they got it about one month ago in um, MD, Maryland. Maryland, right? I think so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being influenced by the name or not, but there's a lot of apple on that, which I assume is normal because this description does say notes of apple and berry. It's like a really ripe... So this is like a weird thing that I used to do in the Carolinas. Apple orchards are a really big thing in like North Carolina. I used to always go with my husband's family to go apple picking apple picking it's also weird being like california but like people are like ew <laughs> but we used to go pick apples but a lot of times a lot of the apples would fall on the ground and not rot but ripen i mean they would rot too but there's a very prominent scent of like very very ripe apples in the air when you go apple picking um i'm getting that on the nose again it could be power of suggestion from the name but man very very ripe ripe apple scent on that it's not off pudding though it's really good Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's very ethanol forward, more so than the regular bottle and bond. We know this is 100 proof, um, thanks to Patrick. But this one is, a, it's it comes across on the nose a bit stronger. So I'm curious if that'll follow through with the taste. Very different. It doesn't have the very prominent, I'm going to keep calling it Texas notes during the screen because I don't, I don't know what else to call it. Texas whiskey essence. It doesn't really have that. It comes off a lot hotter than a hundred proof. Um, I don't get as much of the peanut butter though. I feel like I'm getting more traditional bourbon with this one. I don't get as much of the apple on the taste either. I get it more on the nose, but oh, apple cider donuts. Yes, yeah, Steven, we have those too at the apple orchards here in, in or in the Carolinas. Oh my God, those are amazing. I like, I have it, I have like an album of it on my um, Google Nest Hub thing. It's like a photo frame. And literally every now and then those little apple cider donuts pop up and I get so hungry. They're so good. I imagine the ones near you are just as good, but. Yeah, on the nose is very, very apple forward, but I don't get as much on the taste. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a really good whiskey. It's just, I think that the bottle and bond bourbon is so good on its own that I think I would probably levitate more towards that one. Again, it's a limited release, experimental, I'm sure. Um, and if you're in love with the distillery, it's always good to try something new. I would just say, though, that this Applewood, it has a reputation, man. It, it, it follows it. And everyone says the Applewood is like, oh, you got to try, you got to try Balcona, or not Balconis. <laughs> wow. Wow. Woodenville Applewood. Now, Joseph did say that there's a cast strength version out there, so maybe that's the one they're talking about. Um, what's up, Ben? Um, so, Z Man is sipping some finish in his port cast. That's what someone was talking about that earlier. Um, available in Arizona and Bourbon Cool Stream. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you shouldn't get much apple. They just use toasted staves from cut down apple trees. Gotcha. Yeah, no, Joseph, I, I was just saying on the nose, I get a lot of the apple and I kind of wanted it to follow through a little bit. I'm being a little biased, but I wanted it to follow through on the taste. It, it doesn't really quite follow through. It's still very sweet though. I just think the bottle and bond bourbon is so good that I don't know, just personally, I would go towards that, but I get that this is something special and yeah, more power to them if they could release a limited release like this. I, I love when distilleries experiment. That's one of my favorite things. Um, Y'all know I talk about High West a lot. They do so much experimenting with finishing that I praise if that. Even if it doesn't work out perfectly, they still do a really good job with finishing. So I always praise people for that. All three barrels sold out in a day. Wow, that's crazy. No, man, it's, it's good stuff. But... I think it's about time we move on to our final Woodenville of the night. Um, this one I'm not scared of because I've had similar ones to it, but I'm actually excited. I Okay, I had a weird day yesterday. 
I was craving peated scotch like all day. So I like once I finished work, I literally went and just drank peated scotch over and over and over again. I don't know. It was a weird craving that came across me. I'm sorry to all my bourbon lovers. I know. But I had a weird craving for it. And I just kept drinking and drinking and drinking. And I'm excited for this one. So I do have some info on the triple triple barrel Ardbeg finish. Um, just take a bit of a water break here. This is the one that I was most interested in trying. So this one actually was also a distillery only release. It was $70, 91 proof, initially aged in new heavy toasted, lightly charred American oak barrels. After a stay in new oak barrels, it is rebarreled into used bourbon barrels for additional aging and mellowing. Finally, it is rebarreled a third time into used Ardbeg Isla Scotch barrels. That sounds very exciting. <laughs> Did I finish work around noon? No, I okay. It's, it's slowed down a bit today, but yesterday I was really busy. We were nominated for 14 Emmys across my company, and I had to make like promos for all of our shows that were nominated. So, like, I've been rushing to get those out, but I finished those. Um, technically, today we're still waiting on CBS to finish a couple of them. So, yeah, it's 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 slowed down a bit, but it, for a while there, the past week or so has been really really busy. Um, so Patrick says he strongly disliked peated scotch and he actually liked the triple barrel. Interesting. Um, I was wondering this on my finger. I think it was from the tape that I peeled off. Um, so, okay, that's interesting to know, Patrick. You you like the triple barrel, but you don't like peated scotch. Well, I am learning to love peated scotch. And um, I've noticed that scotch finish is a thing. High West did it. Um, there was another distiller that did a scotch finish. I don't remember it off offhand, but... So Joseph didn't like this one. Okay, well, we'll see if I like it. Again, I, I'm i more of like, I'm more open to scotch, I think, than a lot of people are. At least in the bourbon community. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's see how this, this one does. Oh, yep. Right off the bat, smells like scotch. And you know what? I don't dislike the nose. Um, I, I just want to take like a first first whiff of it. Man, if you told me this was a lightly peated scotch, I'd believe you. All of the sweetness from the bourbon, like here's the bourbon here. Yeah, sweet caramel, peanut butter. Going over to the Ardbeg finished one. I think the, the, the Isla peatiness is pretty dominant on the nose. It doesn't... I've been drinking a lot of castrant peated scotch, so this one is pretty mellow at 91 proof. But I'm hoping that there's more of the bourbon influence on the, the taste than just the nose. Or, let me rephrase that. I hope that I can tell this is a bourbon when I drink it and it doesn't just taste like an Isla scotch. <laughs> Cheers, you guys. Mm. Man. Ooh. Dang. As someone that's been really enjoying Isla Scotches lately, that that ashiness, I guess I would describe it more of like the smoke. And this is some way that someone described scotch to me um, or peated scotch to me early on. It's like being next to a campfire that was just put out, like someone poured water on a campfire. It's that smoky note, that like ashy smoky note that's in this whiskey. But it's really, really sweet, and it, it, it drinks more like a bourbon with a finish of a scotch. So let me let me try that again. Man, I like that a lot. Welcome, Brothers of the Jam. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I met you on the Discord, so thanks for stopping in. I think I don't know if you were the one that were asking for the schedule. Someone was asking for the schedule, and you were in the conversation. Uh, but man, good to see you. I think, it's, I think it's your first time here. Yeah, the the... So Patrick says to him, it reminds him of barbecue smoke. Yeah, I, so I, I kind of, the only reason I don't say that is because I've had some Texas mesquite smoked um, releases. One is called Brimstone. It's from um, Balcones. And that is like straight up barbecue. This is slightly different. This is still more in the Isla territory for me. That's just because I, I like that flavor profile. You, if you're less familiar with it, you may associate it more with barbecue, which is totally fine. I just, I've had more barbecue ones that I think are, more barbecue-y <laughs> than that so i thought it was you that asked okay that's what i thought so um man you know what 
I so so what's the deal with this one, you guys? I know it was distillery only. Um, they only had the first thousand bottles will be hand numbered and given on random order. So Patrick, can you said earlier? Can you still get this? Is it still available? Because I'm interested. <laughs> I like this. Um, <laughs> Joseph, I meant more on the finish of the, like, the palette, not. I, I gotcha, I gotcha, but. Yeah, it's, well, what it reminds you of, like, I guess I'll say it like this. It reminds me of how a peated scotch that has been finished in sherry, the sherry, inf okay, this is going to be really confusing, I'm sorry. If you ever had a peated scotch that is sherry finished, Ardbeg Oogadal is one of my favorites. That sherry is so prominent, but it's on the finish of the whiskey. You get with that one, you get like the, the peat smoke up front, and then you get this, a bang of like sherry finish. This is kind of like that, where up front is bourbon, but then the, the bang of it is the scotch. So kind of flipped around a little bit. That's that's how I describe it. But um, <clears throat> Patrick says they saw a few yesterday. Yeah, man, this is good. Yeah. I don't have anything wrong to say with that. I mean, of course, again, it'd be great at cast strength. I, I, I'm going to say that about anything that's below 100 proof. The 100 proof releases, though, I really did enjoy. And I am absolutely going to go pick up another Woodenville after trying these. I mean, hearing that there's cast strength options, hearing that there's store picks in my area. Um, someone said that earlier, that my store has store picks of Woodenville. That excites me so much. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to try them here. Um, Patrick, again... Thank you so much for these. Um, I'm curious to hear, Patrick, what is your favorite of these of these five? Um, I know you said that you like the think you like the bottle and bond better than the regular bourbon. Um, what about the rest of you guys? Now that I've tried them, I'm, I'm more interested to hear your thoughts because I have something to actually relate to. Um, Steven says, interesting. This is definitely reminds me of some scotch that's peated in Oloroso sherry finish. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, I mean, I love finished peated scotch i think that's what really got me into peated scotch is trying ones that have been finished i think just regular peated scotch is it's okay but when you combine that with the finishing of like a sherry finish man that's that's like right up my alley yeah ben i i need one too <laughs> um if you guys missed uh my message earlier about patreon i'm doing an after party tonight for the very first time so if you want to be a part of that um, it's a Google Hangout. Y'all can join with your cameras and microphones and chat with me. Um, all of my patron levels are invited tonight. Normally, that's a $10 level patron. But tonight, I'm inviting everyone to celebrate the launch of my Patreon. So if you're interested in just hanging out and just trying it out, there is a link in the description below. Um, just hit show more and you'll see my Patreon link. Um, or Donnie, if you're still here, um, would, if you could send the link, that'd be awesome. Um, all of y'all, anyone that joins at any Patreon level is invited tonight to the after party. So... Get, get in there. I'll post the link shortly after this stream. I um, just want to give you guys like a little final reminder that um, it's going to be, I'll say it's going to be lit. Ugh, cringe. But yeah, I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Like if you guys have Woodenville and you want to come to the after party with a bottle of Woodenville, please do. I, I would love to hear your thoughts on it and taste through it with you. Um, so Patrick's order of favorites are Bottle and Bond, Applewood, um, Triple Barrel, Rye, and Bourbon. So I think if I had to put these in order just based on first impressions, It'd be Bottle and Bond. I would put the Triple Barrel second. Rye third, Applewood, and then Bourbon. I think that's... I mean, none of them are bad. I did not have a single bad bottle tonight. <laughs> Steven says... Oh, thank you, Donnie, for the link. Appreciate it. I, I could I could send the link myself, too, but I, I don't have it copied. <laughs> Steven says he's going to need some nuggets tonight. Uh, just carry for some Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. B517. Dang have not had an electric that old. Um, Z-Man prefers the regular bourbon. Yeah, yeah, more power to you. I, I didn't have anything wrong with the regular bourbon. The only reason I put it last is because I preferred the bottle and bond over it. Um, yeah, so before we end tonight, I do want to give a shout out to... Oop, there, turn off my light. There we go. <laughs> I do want to give a shout out to all the patrons that have um, become patrons so far. Like I said, I just launched this today. So excited for all of you guys to join and like offer your support. Really, it, it, it means a lot to me. Because I, it's just, I was so nervous about launching it because I was like, I don't want to come across as like, I'm just 
asking for money because that's never been the intention. It's just because I've been spending so much more on this channel now. I really want to put more into it. Buy some t-shirts to sell to you guys. Buy some stickers to give out to you guys on Patreon, which, by the way, there's, like, a limited edition perk. Um, if you guys want stickers also, maybe that should be my, like, point. Like, oh, if you sign up for my Patreon in the next 30 days, you get a limited edition sticker just for you. So, um, so my shout-out to my seven current patrons. Um, of course, Patrick Starkey, the guy who brought you tonight, um, was my very first patron. So thank you, Patrick, for that. I really do appreciate it. And Heather, too. Um, next, I Whiskey She Wines. Of course, Bobby and Sam. All my love and all my support goes out to them. I know Bobby's having a tough time right now. He, he's, he just has riot duty right now. He's with the police. And, man, my heart goes out to you. And I know it's tough, but y'all are awesome. And stick through it. I know we'll come through this. We'll all come through this better people. Um, next shout out is Steve Anderson, of course, um, Steve A, who was in the chat earlier, then the Whiskey Dick Bill, um, with the super chat, and of course, my first $10 patron was Don Nishida, um, Don, thank you so much for that, and another $10 patron, Donnie the Linux Cat, really appreciate it, Donnie, man, I, I look forward to our hangouts, like, that's why I want to do that, because I'm like, it, the reason I did the hangouts at the $10 level for the after party hangouts is because, like, that's for a week, for a month, that's a lot of, like, after parties, so, I appreciate y'all that are willing to do that. And those of you that, that did a lower tier first, um, try it out tonight. See if you have fun. If you do, I would love if you guys could, you know, go up to the $10 level. If you're like, you know what, I'll, I'm fine with just one hangout a month. That's cool too. So, um, and of course, Steven Sussman. I don't know if I just said your name or not. I may have said it twice. <laughs> um, so Brothers of the Dram says, I has the regular Woodenville straight bourbon. Um, enjoy the notes, but not a fan of the palate. There's a better place for the price. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's very reminiscent of like a Texas whiskey, which I know is very polarizing. Um, it's only ninety proof. Oh wait, sorry, I'm sorry. Brothers of the Dram, you're Jack, King Jacked, right? You changed your name. That's what it is. I'm like, why do I recognize the name? What's up? I, I know who you are now. I, I was like, why do I recognize your name? Sorry about that. Sorry, I didn't recognize you earlier. <laughs> it wasn't until Joseph said Jack that I'm like, oh, I know who you are. Um, yes, Brandon, thank you guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, all the likes really do help people find this, these streams after the fact. And, of course, if you subscribe, you get to see more live with me here. So just to make sure we are all caught up on the chat, um, Joseph Brazo is bragging about his cast strength again. Um, Joseph, um, hit me up. <laughs> I, I, I am very interested in trying the cast strength. I don't need a full bottle, but if you have open bottles and willing to share a sample, man, I'd, I'd love it. Um, but I think that's about it for tonight. I'm excited for the after party. I'm going to give you guys about 10 minutes. If you have not yet become a patron and you're interested in joining the after party, please go check it out. Um, I will, I'll post the link there in about 10 minutes to the, the Google Hangout. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you, Patrick, for these awesome samples. And I'm going to go pick up, pick up a bottle of Woodenville very, very soon. Um, so cheers, you guys. And here's to more craft whiskey because man that there's a lot to discover about craft whiskey and woodenville is really really knocking out of the part so cheers to woodenville cheers to all y'all have a great night